Good morning, everyone. So sorry about the technical difficulties. Uh, my name is Danish, and I'm a volunteer at SABU Singapore's uh, Research and Innovation Corps. As a project, as a project manager, a program which I'll be introducing later on, I'm in charge of overseeing uh, overseeing the projects. Projects to success. I'm currently studying at Tomasic Polytechnic or for Diploma in Cybersecurity and Digital Forensics. Today, I'll be sharing about the importance of digitalization as well as more about our initiative, Digitalize Singapore. Let me give a brief introduction to this presentation contents. Firstly, I'll be introducing Sabi Youth Singapore. Following, I will share with you about the importance of bringing your business digital and the cost of doing so. Finally, I'll be doing Julia, everyone can see your browser. Ju Julia. Finally, I'll be sharing about the importance of Digitalize Singapore, a program that can provide technological resources for your businesses free of charge. So I'll be jumping straight into what Sabi Youth Singapore is about. We are a grown-up youth movement wanting to bring youths who have an interest in tech together to secure Singapore's digital future. Our company is fully run by youths such as myself, who have a passion for empowering other tech youths through programs and events. We are a national movement supported by the National Youth Council and the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore. Through our vision, we seek to empower Singaporean youths by providing a platform for them to safely and responsibly explore their interests in tech with other like-minded youths. Cyber Youth Singapore is on a mission to encourage youths to take up cybersecurity as a career and advocate for a strong cybersecurity awareness in Singapore through youth action. In the future, we are expecting our activities to reach 100,000 youths in the next seven years and to be the national platform for youths in tech to contribute to Singapore's digital future. We aspire to be the connector between youths and the tech industry and vice versa. Now let's move on to talk about the importance of digitalization. Firstly, you may be wondering what digitalization is and why digitalization is so important. By definition, digitalization is of a company is the use of digital technology to improve a business model, to produce revenue and value adding opportunities. Here are some statistics showing how companies that did not bring their businesses online saw loss of market share, while those that rode the digital wave saw an increase in revenue and profit. As detailed here, more than half of companies without a digital platform believe that it will take only less than a year before market share is lost. 56% of CEOs have acknowledged an increase in revenues due to digital improvements. Finally, companies who took advantage of the digitalization have made 23% more in profit as compared to companies who have not. This emphasizes the fact that digitalization is an important and powerful advantage that businesses should make use in order to bring themselves to the next level. However, we believe that, be, that beyond numbers, there are more compelling and beneficial reasons to go digital. We believe strongly in these statements, from engaging customers to optimizing processes, transforming products and services, and lastly, empowering employees. Firstly, engaging in customers. Today, almost everybody has at least one device on them, and they're often scrolling through a form of social media or an application. Needless to say, businesses with good digital presences are going to outperform those who don't in terms of engaging their customers. This also means that when businesses put themselves on a digital market, they will have a much larger outreach, exposing themselves to a large, much larger market. What's even more beneficial is having data about customers, as that enables businesses to specifically target and tailor their strategies to increase returns of their outreach. Optimizing processes is another benefit of going digital. There are many digital solutions that can help business to manage their workflow, easily access data from a database, 
or have access to an application that can improve their efficiency. Nowadays, cloud services such as Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and even Alibaba are becoming more prominent with, the, with these digital services being at the ready for anybody to use. It is much easier for SMEs to obtain such computing power or services they might not have been previously been able to. Being able to transform services and products to suit your customer needs is also a key advantage of going digital. Based on direct feedback from customers, companies will also be able to make changes along their way to their products through simple patch notes or updates or other means that can enhance them. This could be as simple as automating an invoice or developing an application to have better control over a device. Finally, the most important of all, empowering employees. Your company is only as extraordinary as your people and ensuring that they are digitally trained could enhance a business in many ways. Employees will be able to focus their efforts on growing a business rather than wasting it on repetitive tasks. These four points are just some of the few reasons to go digital. But we're sure once you do go digital, the opportunities will come rolling in. Next, we will be talking about the cost of going digital. While the benefits of going digital certainly outweighs the cost, it is worth nothing that these solutions may not come at a cheap price. Listed here are some statistics outlining the expenses companies incur going digital. The costs are massive, with necessary technologies and services for digital transformation to reach a staggering 2.3 trillion by 2030. These costs are also the reason why people are experiencing a delay in bringing their businesses digital. A shocking 3.7 million a year in overhead expenses are incurred for the time taken for IT teams to lay groundwork for digital overhead expenses are incurred for the time taken for IT teams to lay. As you can see, they might become a burden on top of the other costs such as salaries, maintenance, and etc. Digitalize Singapore is a joint program offered by Cyber Youth Singapore through our Research and Innovation Core, or RSC for short, and Exabyte Singapore. We hope to support youths on the kickstart and execution of their tech ideas by funding their projects in terms of digital solutions and services. Let me share more about RIC. And research into the area of technology. Our goal is to nurture and the next generation of thinkers, innovators, and doers. We are on a mission to develop a body of youths who would be capable of technological research and innovation for the advancement of Singapore's digital frontier. RIC is powering Digitalized Singapore, a program whose aims are simple. Firstly, we seek to nurture and support youths on their digitalization journey. Secondly, Digitalized Singapore introduces the wide possibilities and opportunities of digitalization, as well as providing the hands-on experience and opportunity to test out their ideas. Finally, we would like to encourage healthy time utilization among the youths by providing productive and educational activities during the COVID-19 pandemic, ultimately seeking to nurture, support, and develop your entrepreneurial and creative desires. Continuing on to the program specifics, we are supporting four general areas of interest under Digitalized Singapore, which are cybersecurity, digital development, deep technology, and emerging technology. So you may be wondering what these are. Cybersecurity is the practice of protecting systems, networks, and programs from digital attacks. Digital development is the use and application of technology and digital tools in international development. Deep technology is application of high-tech innovation in engineering. Emerging technology are technologies whose development or practical applications are still largely unrealized and are still in its development phase. Under Digitalized Singapore, we will be supporting projects that aids in the personal development of applying use, contributing to, contributes to Singapore's development of digital growth, and furthers the study of a certain area of technology. 
eligible applicants are the are youth of age 13 to 35 who are residing in Singapore. If you do not qualify for the age range, you're still being able you're still able to apply as long as your applying team has at least one eligible applicant. You may be wondering how exactly can Digitalize Singapore support you? Well, we are providing $150,000 worth of digital solutions and services to support you, such as providing free web hosting for your e-commerce website. The services we are providing for your project ideas are shared hosting, WordPress hosting, and a virtual private server, all including a personalized domain name. We want to give you the freedom to explore possibilities of what you can create with these services. In addition, we will be also be delegating project managers to your projects to keep track of the progress and act as intermediary to CYS. So I've been mentioning that Digitalized Singapore is deployed through the RIC, but how specifically? The RIC runs two programs, Cyber Youth Innovators Program and Cyber Youth Researchers Program. Should you want to research a new project, join the Cyber Youth would you, should you want to register a new project, join the Sabi Youth Innovators Program. As an innovator, individuals or groups can apply for funding in terms of digital solutions and services. Participants can be from 13 to 35 years old and must be residing in Singapore. Applications are open now till July 2021. Applications for Sabi Youth Innovators Program can be found from Digitalize Singapore's website. Should you want to join existing projects, join a Sabi Youth Researchers Program as a researcher. A list of projects from innovators would be available under Digitalize Singapore and would be listed publicly on the Digitalize Singapore's website. Applications will be open in 20, August 2021. Should you be interested, do sign up for our mailing list, which is also found on the website, and we'll notify you when applications open. Please scan a QR code if you'd like to find out more about Digitalize Singapore or sign up for our Innovators Program right now. Finally, do follow us on Cyber Youth Singapore's Instagram for more updates. Thank you for listening. We're now open for Q&A. If you have any questions in the future, feel free to email us at rsc.help at cyberyouth.sg and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. All right, a wonderful presentation, you guys. Let's say thank you to Danish. Danish, I know you had a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a hiccup, a bit of a rough start, but I think you picked it up wonderfully. And for that, you should be absolutely proud of yourself. And you know, don't feel too bad about it because at the end of the day, we're all human and these things do happen. So you guys, once again, let's give him a round of applause. And if you have any questions regarding his presentation, go ahead and leave that in the Q&A box and we will answer your questions right away. <laughs> So Danish, how are you doing today? Like, how's your week been? Tell me about it. Uh, my week has been going fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for asking. Um, yeah, um, it's been really going fine. Uh, having the chance to present today is really spectacular. Absolutely. And how are things in Singapore? Because just I was asking the audience, and they were saying that you know things are slowly starting to open up again. So how has the last few weeks been for you, really? Um, I mean, currently we're still stuck in the COVID pandemic and it gotten worse. So we're all stuck at home. Um, school classes have been online. So it kind of sucks since I kind of isn't, I'm not really that happy since I kind of enjoy going to school. But uh, so far since um, the lockdown has been a bit lighter, you're, we're, we're allowed to go out with friends and all that. So it's pretty, I'm pretty happy so far. Yeah. Well, I think the grass is definitely greener on your side because like I said earlier, I'm based in Malaysia and things here are so bad. I'm not sure if I can even say that on live, but you know, a live stream right now, but it is, it's just so bad. Um, we can't go out, we can't really travel uh, beyond a certain kilometer and we're not allowed to travel interstate. So we're just kind of basically stuck in this bubble and things are just not getting any better at the moment. So we're kind of envious of you Singaporeans right now. Things are going great. <laughs> So are you guys allowed to go back to gyms, uh, watch movies? Uh, currently, yes. Uh, I, from quite yesterday, or no, a few days ago back, uh, we are just allowed to go to gyms, uh, to gym, uh, going out. However, dining is still restricted to two people. So it's still kind of, yeah, it's still kind of hard for a group of friends to go out. But still, uh, I'm still pretty thankful for what we have. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing about it is that, you know, even if you want to hang out with your friends, you have to do it through Zoom because you can't do it more than two people. You guys are under phase three right now, am I right? Um, if I'm correct, 
we used to be, but then it got then uh the COVID cases rose up pretty uh pretty harshly. Then after that, we were back to two, if I'm correct. But I'm not really sure. I do apologize. I'm not uh I did I don't really uh, follow along. I only know the current like restrictions and the important whatnot, sir. So, yeah, I do apologize yeah, for my part. <laughs> It's okay, because at this point, it's like on again, off again, on again, off again. So yeah. you know, nobody really know where we are. Uh, Desmond from, from uh, the audience says, don't worry, Lauren, we all know it's in the news. Hello. <laughs> we all know the situation here in Malaysia. Uh, but you guys are under phase two heightened alert, I see. So what is phase three then? Does that mean that you'll be able to move freely around? Do you have, do you have any travel restrictions, like, you know, from district to district? Um, Sorry, district. Um, even now we don't really have any travel restrictions since Singapore is such a small, uh, such a small place. However, um, we are we used to be able to go out with like in groups of eight. Uh, dining was restricted to groups of five to eight. If I'm correct. Wow. Uh, amusement parks was open. We had friends, uh, friends going over to amusement parks. Uh, so we had to go to school every day. But then, uh, since uh we were in phase two item alert, it kind of uh school was closed. Like couldn't go to school. And yeah, it got a bit worse, but thankfully we got better right now. It's getting better since everyone's getting the vaccination and all that. Absolutely. Okay, so a question just came in. Let's have a look at it. You can look at it from your end as well. All you have to do is click on the word Q&A. There's like a little marker there. So this one from Colin. Colin's question is, does one need to learn about coding to venture into e-commerce and other general areas of interest as mentioned earlier? Well, I'm correct. Uh, if I'm, if I'm, I'm sorry, give me a moment. Um, if I'm uh, sorry, one does not need to learn about coding to venture into e-commerce or general areas of interest. Uh, as like we said, we would like you, we would be uh, supporting you uh, throughout your e-commerce uh, process if you would like to work with us. Yes. So, right, so there is no really no need. So basically, that would mean that you guys take care of the coding, the you know the website functionality, all that. Yeah, you guys will handle yeah, that. Yeah, we'll be no not. Not sure whether we'll be handling it, but we'll be supporting you in helping to uh to share the WordPress hosting, the website hosting, the virtual private server. So we'll be helping you uh set up most of it. And yeah, we'll also be delegating uh, someone else, uh some uh, one of the project managers to be uh intermediaries, just to, uh, help you out with any questions and all that. Yeah. Uh, other than that, Julia will also be following up with typing an answer right now. So you'll be able to see what's the answer that she's been written and you also uh most likely it's a follow-up from what I've been saying. All right, super cool because like to most of us, you know, the normal person who is not IT or, you know, digitally related, it can be quite a headache when it comes to setting up something like that. So it's great that you guys are giving support. We have another question just came in. This one is from Yuki. Yuki's question is, after the setup, uh, how long would you give maintenance? Um, can I ask maintenance on... Uh, maintenance on what, for example? Could you... Could you um, I do apologize. Uh, maintenance on what? Meaning, how long would you provide the maintenance service for? I'm guessing. Oh, that okay, okay. Um, yeah. for that question, uh, I don't think I mean uh, I'm allowed to un uh, answer. But uh, my my dear friend Elliot here will be taking over for that question. Okay, I, I think I'll answer the question for um Digitalize Singapore will be providing the resources for one year, so uh, any projects that are uh you know applied through Digitalize Singapore will all be providing the resources for a maximum of one year. But we are looking to extend the project to another six years after the pilot run. So if you are interested in continuing to, you know, continue using our resources, you can continue to apply after the year is over. All right. Also, hello, Elliot. Hello. <laughs> Hi. You can stay on screen with us if you like, or if you feel more comfortable, you can always turn off your camera and come back again. It's up to you. So let's take this next question here. So the question is from Aaron. Aaron says, hi, Danish. Thanks for your presentation. Wonder what's the scope of responsibility as a researcher? And also, I just need to supply an, uh, do I only just need to supply an idea for digitalization? Uh, wait, the question disappeared. Uh, okay, so click under answered on the top. You have the tab. Oh, okay, it's the answer. Yeah, okay. It's right there. Okay, so the, okay, for under researcher, or you'll be working together with, if I'm correct, uh, Ellie, do correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, as a researcher, you'll be working together with uh, people who has already has a project, and then you'll be all you have to do is just support whatever they are asking you. If uh, if they are oh, sorry, the project just you'll just be supporting whatever they are asking you to do. Um, being able to needing to supply an idea for digitalization, if I'm correct, Julia will be currently be typing an answer. I do apologize. I am not. Uh, I don't. I'm not 
really sure about that the second part of the question. I, I do apologize on my part. All right. To add on to what Dennis said, um, as a researcher, you will be usually researchers are for those that don't have a project idea, but they'll still like to collaborate um, on a certain project or they'll still like to find out more about how to go digital. And um, researchers would join in projects that are created or ideated by the innovators in our program. The researchers will be collaborating with the innovators to work on a project together so that uh, at the end of the day, the project will be come to fruition with the help of the innovators and the researchers in the project. Um, as a researcher, you don't need to supply an idea for digitalization. Uh, you don't need to have a project idea as well. You just need to be willing to contribute to a project that um, may not be yours. You just need to be active in playing a part in learning how to do certain digital stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, if, but if you do have ideas to contribute to making the idea, the project better, then yeah, do feel free to suggest it to the innovators in the project. Right, so I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I'm going to let both of you guys go now, but before I do, on behalf of like Singapore, I'd like to thank you for being Danish. Thank you, Elliot, for coming on board the last minute. It was nice to meet you. Uh, next time, probably we'll have a chat before you know we start. So thanks once again to everyone who's watching. Let's give them another round of virtual applause. Danish, Elliot, I'll see you guys soon. Take care and stay safe. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Exobytes. Grow your business online.